Two lucky Americans are celebrating a full recovery from Ebola, the deadly contagion that has over 50,000 people under quarantine. Now, as these survivors reunite with their loved ones, many are wondering if it was an experimental treatment that saved their lives. And could this new medicine hold the key to stopping the virus? Here's ABC's Steve Osinsami. Today is a miraculous day. I'm thrilled to be alive, to be well, and to be reunited with my family. It feels like a miracle of medicine. Two American missionaries fighting one of the most deadly diseases on the planet, Ebola. Today, doctors declared both of them healthy and virus free. My dear friend, Nancy Wrightbull, upon her release from the hospital, wanted me to share her gratitude for all of the prayers on her behalf. As she walked out of her isolation room, all she could say was, to God be the glory. Nancy's son, just one of the many, so glad his mom can come home. That was a very emotional time. Uh, Dad told me about it because they hadn't been able to see each other for several weeks. And uh, she actually was able to, to get out of the bed and come to the window and they put their hands uh, on the glass together, kind of one of those uh, serene moments. For the last four weeks, Dr. Kent Brantley and Nancy Wrightbull have been fighting for their lives. In late July, they both came down with the virus during their work at a field hospital in West Africa. Two weeks later, a specially outfitted plane flew the sick missionaries to Emory University Hospital in Atlanta. They had to recover in isolation units, quarantined from the world. We had five physicians, 21 nurses who cared for these two patients during their hospitalization. The doctors here worked around the clock with the best medical equipment available to keep them alive while the families prayed for the best. Today, those prayers were answered. Doctors gave both patients a clean bill of health. There is no evidence that uh, once a patient has cleared the virus from their blood that they will relapse. I am forever thankful to God for sparing my life, and I'm glad for any attention my sickness has attracted to the plight of West Africa in the midst of this epidemic. With this amazing recovery comes new hope and an experimental treatment for the disease. Dr. Brantley and Wright Bull are the first two patients to ever receive a serum called ZMAP. It's an antibody serum made with a protein in tobacco plants designed to help the body attack the Ebola virus by mimicking the body's own immune response, speeding up the body's process of destroying the virus. But ZMAP is still totally untested and unproven. I think that it's far too soon to say that this drug had anything to do with their cure. At this point, we don't know if the drug helped, if it hurt, or had no effect whatsoever. That's why they have to study this. While doctors in America try to figure out if the drug makes a difference, at the heart of the Ebola outbreak, the epidemic is getting out of control. Already over 1,300 have died in the region. Ground Zero Liberia, where they could use both the serum and a miracle. How do you feel about this idea that maybe, you know, an experimental drug could be brought to Liberia? Oh, that would be wonderful. Um, right now we're hanging on to straws. We don't want this thing to spread. It can, it can become an international problem. So if we have that and it's working, that would be wonderful for our people. I personally see it as a good thing because uh, it's like way the best of two evil. If we don't give it, people are still going to die. In Liberia, it doesn't look hopeful. Hospitals are few and full. This is what's passing for bedside care, holding units for people sick with the disease. With few doctors who are struggling to find good and clean equipment, it's no wonder the virus is spreading so. Ebola is one of the deadliest viruses on Earth, highly contagious. It kills up to 90% of the people it infects and spreads through contact with bodily fluids like blood, sweat, vomit. Symptoms begin with fever, vomiting, and severe blood loss. Death comes quickly, often within days. Anyone who can survive it needs constant medical attention. And here, that's a rare commodity. Patients wait for hours, even days, to get treatment. Some will die right here. How do you feel about the fact that people have to wait outside, you know, because you're just at capacity? Well, that's a horrible feeling. It could be a relative, it could be a friend, it could be a loved one of yours. Um, and there's really nothing much we can do. We have a few mattresses. I'm going to put the people out in the hallway where the place is so cold. Finda has traveled to the holding unit with six children. She's lost her mother, husband, sister, and brother to Ebola, and now her nephew is sick too. 
why. Because it's safe. Hey, see? Hey, I get it. What I keep in my head? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Healthcare workers here have suddenly become targets of violence and anger. Families blame them for spreading the disease or for not doing more to control it. Angry residents even attack the unit, forcing it to close. In this kind of pandemic that we're having, hospitals ideally should each have a holding unit. Does anyone have that in town, in Monrovia? No, we do not have it yet. Though two new centers open this week, workers are overwhelmed and undersupplied. There seems no end in sight to the suffering from this epidemic. I think if we really wanted to see a major difference in Africa, we would need to send over thousands of health care providers to be able to provide the care that these people really need. Thousands of miles away, Dr. Brantley and Nancy Wright Bull count their blessings. Tonight, they're reunited with their families and are asking for prayers for this other side of the world. For Nightline, I'm Steve Osinsami in Atlanta.